Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com. There's my phone number and my website. So today I ended up tuning the L Pi coils. I didn't have to adjust the L, just the Pi. It was pretty close. So don't make fun of my zip ties. Zip ties. Uh, I can't find the hose clamp I was using. I have to go get one, but securing the anode connection on the side with zip ties. And then I have to, I want my 1K resonant load resistor. Non-inductive, going from the anode to a strap to ground. Have the plate choke connected. So, I had to add about an inch to the pie coil. Tomorrow I'll do the feed through. I have a bunch of stuff to do. I uh, had a bunch of stuff to do today, so I didn't get to both. But it looks like it's going to need about 40 or so, maybe 50 picofarads. So, okay, so you can see everything. So I'm going to show you something. Right now, I'm back feeding it with my common analyzer. I know, it's a bunch of tools here. So at 50 megs, it actually covers the entire 6 meter band. 50 megs, see? 1.3. Even though the coil coils are so far away, the tube, just by adding the cover, just, just a little bit. So it's tuned out with the cover in place. So now, 50 megs, if you can see this, it's kind of bright, 50 megs, one to one. So I'm going to go up to 54 megs. We'll have to retune. That's good enough. Doing this without looking at it. <laughs> it's tricky. I'm just looking at the holding a camera in one hand. Get a little. Let's see. Back and forth without looking at it. There we go. Fifty four megahertz, one to one. Fifty ohms, one to one. So, have the RG393 jumper going from the analyzer to the 716 DIN. This was, this is doing nothing right now. That's so I can set the Feed the rest of the air tomorrow. That's just a 50 ohm load. I'm going to back feed the analyzer with the relays not keyed, and then I'll I'll show how I do that tomorrow. So so it's all set. The output network is tuned. Once again, watch. I'll take the cover off. See, that's why it's important to have the clearances. So if the tube were closer to the wall or the output network straps. So, like I said, I soldered the straps to the plate. The plate wasn't touching the capacitor when I did that. It was pulled away, put a screw through, soldered it, put a screw through, soldered it, took all the screws out, and then put the plate up against the capacitor, put all the screws through with the cap nuts. Everything is real tight. Washer on both sides. I'll obviously replace that with a um, hose clamp. And I have to get a split washer for the bolt here. Tighten that up real tight. But besides that, she's good.
you know, the RF will flow on both sides of the strap. You know, if I tried to use tubing, it would be huge, and if we have, forget about trying to, uh, you know, adjust that. If I needed a little bit more or less inductance, it'd be a nightmare. So, uh, the tubing equivalent, forget the size of this, but it would be huge, like huge, huge, because the tube, do, the RF doesn't conduct, uh, the RF doesn't ride on the inner surface and the outer surface of the tube, so uh, it does with the strap. So you'd need a huge tube to equal the amount of surface area you get with the strap. So that's that. I just have to do the, the feed through SWR, which I'll do tomorrow. And I have some amps to work on tomorrow too. And uh, just waiting on the transformer so I can put the power supply together. But this was like, this took a little time. And uh, You know, so that's that. Nice view of everything. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. There's my phone number and my website. Seventy three.